In this video, I'm going to show you how to print MIDI and audio effects into audio. And what that means is that you take a track that has effects on it. Maybe it has EQ, auto filter, compression, whatever. And then I'm going to encode all of those effects into an audio signal so that that plain audio signal will have all those effects kind of built into it. This also works for MIDI instruments. You can take MIDI and print it to audio. Uh, this is essentially what you do when you export a session. You know, you're printing it to audio, but we can do this on a track by track basis. There are several ways to do it and there are several reasons to do it. The most common reasons would be if you are working with a partner or another producer who does not have the same plugins or instruments, or maybe they don't even have the same DAW as you. You know, maybe you're working in live, they're working in Logic or FL or something. This is a good way to ensure some compatibility and that you can both work on the project because every program accepts audio. So uh, let's check out a couple of ways to do this. And I showed one way in the last video and we're gonna review that again here. Uh, this is the Ion Snowpad and if I hit play, you can hear it going there. I have this auto filter on and it's got an LFO on it. I also have the glue compressor and this compressor for side chaining that we'll talk about in another video. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to turn that off. So let's print this track. I'm going to go to create and choose insert audio track. I'm going to call this pad print. I'm going to take the audio from Ion Snowpad Chord. I'm going to set my monitoring option to Auto. I'm going to record on the track. These buttons turn into circles. And now I can hit Record. This will play into this track easy. And now I can process this as audio. I can do the same thing with an audio track. So here is this uh, sample here. It's called Colluding Atmos D Sharp. And I am going to get a new audio track. I'm going to call this Colluding Print. In the Audio From Chooser, I'm going to choose the Colluding Atmos track. Set my monitoring option to auto. And now I have a couple of other options here uh, worth checking out. Where do I want to take this Colluding track from? Like what, what point in the track do I want to record it? Do I want to record it pre-effects, post-effects, or post-mixer? Well, if I record it pre-effects, then it will record before any of these effects are put on. And essentially what I would have uh, would just be this exact sample. And I don't want that because I already have that. So if I select post effects, now all of these effects will be printed as part of the signal from this channel. And that's probably what I'm gonna do. I could also select post mixer. And then the pan knob and fader would also affect the signal. Uh, for now, I'm just going to choose Post Effects. I'm going to record on the track. Here we go. And all of those effects are now encoded in a new plain audio signal. So again, I could turn those effects off on this track. I could delete the track altogether. I have them here. So to recap, in your printed tracks, you're going to choose audio from your source track, choose a point at which you want to record, whether it's pre-effects, post-effects, or post-mixer. Make sure that the input monitoring is set to auto, record arm it. Make sure that the source track is set to play by clicking on the play arrow and click on the record button. This will play and print onto here. It seems complicated at first, but once you do it a few times, it's actually quite easy. Now, what if I wanted to print multiple tracks to one 
uh, audio track. I could do that. And the easiest way to do it is by resampling. And so I'm going to create a new audio track. I'm going to set the audio from to resampling. This is going to do essentially the same thing we just did with the individual printed tracks, but it's going to take the audio signal from the master output. The only caveat is that it does not take the audio from itself, which would result in a feedback loop. And so Ableton's smart like that. So I'm going to call this resample print. I'm going to record on the track, make sure that the entire scene is going to play by clicking on the scene button here. And I know that we haven't really gone over session view yet. I'm going to go over it in more detail in another week, but hopefully you're getting the idea watching these videos. Okay. It's set to play. I'm just going to hit the record button and watch it go. And there you have it. If I solo the track, disarm it, turn the monitoring to auto so we can hear it, uh, we will just hear this track, but it will be a composite of all the tracks. There you have it. One kind of cool thing you can do with routing and printing is to print just the reverb of a track. And so here's how I do that. Uh, I have this analog stab track here, and right now it's pretty dry. So I'm going to crank this up all the way to send the full signal into this reverb track and we'll hear reverb now. And I might even adjust the settings on this reverb plugin to give it a longer decay time, um, maybe a even bigger room. And now I'm going to get a new track, a new audio track here. I'm going to call this Reverb Print. I'm going to take the audio from the Reverb track, record arm it, hit auto, and then just hit record. And now I have this cool track that's just the reverb of the analog stab. And from here, I could uh, edit it, I could chop it up, I could reverse it. So if you ever heard like a reverse cymbal hit leading into a new song section, like the chorus or the drop or something, you know, this is how that's done. Um, it's great for making risers and impacts for EDM music. Just print that reverb and then mess around with it.